performance, by the way, is always most difficult to obtain at the lowest frequencies because the wavelength there changes rapidly. If we now look at the problems, um, so the one problem you can see is the variations in frequency, but the other problems is the variations in direction. So here you've got, for example, a directional antenna, or two directional antennas, and you can see that the directional, they're pointing in this direction, that's where you would like to talk to, your base station, the other side of your link is in that direction. Now we've honestly seen this, where antenna would have this type of performance. In other words, it will have a null in this direction that you wish to talk to. Now it may seem like I'm exaggerating or talking nonsense, because why would anyone design this? Quite close to disaster of an antenna. But what often happens is it's not like they designed this. The antenna may have done this at some frequency, and then at some later frequency it splits apart that morphing ball that you saw, and this happens and it gets back together again. But the one thing that's really amazing and once again legitimate is people will quit that game at this frequency where it actually became useless. And once again, technically speaking, they are correct. That is the maximum of the pattern. But to you as a user, that is absolutely, absolutely useless. So you really need to know that people design something to do what you would expect it to do. Um, or of course, test it to a lot of detail, but that's difficult. A, a nice omni would do this. In other words, you want it to radiate maximum towards the horizon. It will be a lower gain guy, but still the same thing. And you would like it to be sort of omnidirectional, circular in all directions. And once again, you quite often find this type of behavior, especially on very small omnis that should be doing this, where it's actually lobing. In other words, it's varying both in terms of its omnidirectionality and in terms of its elevation pattern. Now, one of those funny things that I told you about antennas is that an isotrope has been distorted. This guy would be, uh, they would be able to quote higher gain for this antenna, this disastrous antenna, than what I ever can quote for this antenna. Because physics dictate that if I wanted to radiate in all directions, it will have lower gain than this guy, because this guy's got sort of hot spots in these directions. And I would actually quote you these hot spots, even though they are obscure directions that you would never want to talk to. So, and once again, these things vary with frequency. So I even see where a guy would choose this point, next frequency, the lobes will be in a different point, they'll choose that point. Clearly absolute nonsense, even though it is technically correct. This is, I suppose, a picture of the same scenario, just showing it in a real life um, type of situation. So that same sort of nasty pattern, and remember this nastiness varies with frequency. Now you can see that you've both got a problem in terms of talking in all directions. In other words, depending on which way this car is pointing, you may have radiation going that direction, you may not. But even worse, if you look at the elevation, you could have much of the radiation going upwards, for example, or downwards. In both directions, not useful for your communication. But people will quote you these things here as the gain of the antenna. And of course, because it varies with frequencies, that point there that currently is at this frequency, the peak for that specific antenna could be at that. And once again, nonsense. You need to have, need to know what's happening in the direction you're going to use it for. So of course, this would be the ideal case, where it is actually omnidirectional and, and all, uh, all sides. Never possible with the actual vehicle. The vehicle will change it, but you want it as good as you can get it. And of course, where the maximum is towards the horizon, not towards Mars. Pluto or the moon.